Hi, and welcome back to my channel. By now you all know me, but if not, my name's Mario. I put out videos primarily on clinical research and I've been on a roll doing that. Uh, I also talk about personal finance or the financial independence retire early movement, which I'm part of. And uh, one day I hope to put out some travel videos with uh, all the traveling I'm doing. Uh, once I get my uh, video editing skills uh, up to par, uh, I hopefully will start putting out some of those uh, in the future. So today's video is by viewer request. It's on effective monitoring visit report writing. Um, I will go into some feedback that I received on my reports and then talk about how I got to uh, the point where I attain that feedback, what I do, and how you should go about writing a report. Before I get started in talking about all of that, just a reminder, if you haven't done so already, please smash that like button. Also, please subscribe to my channel. Um, it helps me uh, tremendously. I am tracking toward 500 uh, subscribers by the end of the year. Uh, the goal was 1,000. Uh, I have talked in my uh, videos about how in clinical research we set unattainable goals. Uh, I feel like getting to 50% of the goal is a pretty good accomplishment. So um, 500 uh, is going to be the unofficial goal. Uh, we will still strive for 1,000 by the end of the year, which, um, of course, is completely unrealistic. But uh, I do work in clinical research, and we can set some unrealistic uh, goals. So, all right, without further ado, I'm gonna start this by reading what one of my report reviewers sent to my uh, boss at the time. So this is um, uh, not from too long ago, but uh, this is a former boss and uh, this is what the report reviewer uh, said about me. So, I'm, uh, so she introduces herself to my boss. I'm the reviewer for USA reports on the study. I'd like to share with you my feedback for Mario, despite the fact that I haven't received a request for it. All right, honesty, she uh, wasn't asked, but decided to share some feedback anyway. Um, the first thoughts that come to my mind for Mario are incredible quality of work and professionalism, precise overview of his sites, knowledgeable of the study, well adhering to the study specific annotations, which are not simple, well-organized, good communication and cooperation, addressing uh, correctly requests, questions, concerns. As per the detailed tracking in the attachment, I have reviewed 31 reports from Mario. 25 of them were submitted within zero to one days since the visit. And I have um, a 72 hour rule that I'll talk about in this video. Eight of them approved without any correction request. Most of the reports required very few corrections which were addressed right away. Uh, right away. I'm glad to work with such an excellent CRA. So how do you end up getting this kind of feedback for your uh, visit reports? So um, I'm not gonna try and rehash everything I talk about in the uh, interim monitoring visit uh, video. So uh, you can look there for details of how to go about conducting a visit. So what I will say is what I do uh, effectively and to get to writing that report well is first and foremost, above all things, know the protocol. I'm surprised by how many CRAs don't know the protocol they're monitoring all that well. You're supposed to be an expert on this. You're supposed to know uh, the protocol. So if you don't, read it, reread it, spend some time. The next thing that I uh, recommend is looking over the prior visit uh, report and uh, just make sure you know where things are at the site and what needs to be addressed, What uh, is currently going on and just get a sense from that. Uh, so for uh, the first interim monitoring visit report, you'll have the SIV report. For subsequent ones, you'll have the prior monitoring visit report. Review them. The other thing, if available, review the annotations. And what I like to do from the annotations is take my notebook and then just create a checklist for each visit type just based on the annotation. So I have my notebook here and I have uh, an example of uh, just straight uh, questions based on the annotation. So I, I don't necessarily need to look at the annotations, just go through my notebook. I have everything that I need to capture uh, pretty clearly in my notebook. Obviously, you can do this in a computer. I'm a little old school and I haven't really changed my way, so I, I, I still have my notebook. Um, then know what you are doing at the visit. Um, and in order to do this, you need to review the TMF or the things that you need to collect. You need to review uh, EDC in detail are there uh, a lot of uh, issues in EDC? Are there a lot of open queries? What are you going to be doing at this visit? Get a uh, framework, because this is all going to go into uh, what you capture in the detailed notes that you'll take during the visit. So 
you've spent time prepping for this visit, you've, you know the protocol, you've looked at the prior visit report, you know the annotations, you've looked at EDC, you looked at the TMF and uh, are aware of uh, what's needed. Um, and that is a, a lot of work, I, I do realize, but I would say for those tasks of visit prep, spend somewhere two to four hours, it's well worth it because it makes time on site uh, more uh, useful and effective and time on site is precious. So you kind of want to limit how much time uh, you're doing tasks that you could have done while not on site while you are on site. So go through your uh, monitoring visit uh, as you should. Like I said, I have a separate video on all the details of monitoring visit. The thing that I'll stress here is take really clear notes um, and especially on high value topics. And this is uh, some, of, some of the things AEs, con meds, SAEs, deviations, uh, you're going to need to list those clearly in your uh, visit report. So you want detailed notes. So let me take a protocol deviation, for example. What was the protocol deviation? What date did it occur? Was it something that was reportable to the IRB? If it was reportable to the IRB, was it reported? Do you have a copy of the report to the IRB? You want to make all uh, those details pretty uh, clear in your notes so that when you're writing, you just go back, okay, this was a deviation, this was the data that occurred. Yes, it was submitted to the IRB. This is the person that submitted. This was the data that was submitted. Um, and you have all of that. Again, um, for things like AEs, con meds, uh, you, you will want to keep some uh, tracks. For, uh, one of the common things you'll see uh, done wrong is somebody will enter an AE and say that a con med was taken. You go to the con med page, there isn't a con med. So just Keep detailed notes. So, okay, there was an AE of headache. I looked in the EMR, saw that Tylenol was given. However, the um, uh, comment page doesn't list Tylenol. Uh, you want to keep some sense of that. Obviously, that's going to be something that you would query in EDC, but you want to keep your, your notes so you know what's going on subject by subject. Uh, same with the ISF review. Is it contemporaneous current? Um, or are there things that are missing? Is the delegation log uh, there and showing uh, that the people are delegated to the tasks that they are actually performing. Um, my recommendation, there are two documents that I try to always collect uh, copies of. One is the delegation log, just because um, sometimes you really don't uh, have the uh, time to necessarily go through every single person at every single visit, but I'd like to obtain a copy and I can do that from home. I often have noted what was the uh, consent date, for example, who obtained consent at the site. And then I can cross-reference that with the copy of the delegation I have and say, oh, okay, that person was uh, delegated to that role. Um, the other thing I like to always collect is a copy of the uh, IP accountability uh, logs, because sometimes you, you're in a rush, uh, you get into a pharmacy, they give you a 30 minute uh, visit window, you uh, need to try to get through everything and you can't quite reconcile their logs with uh, your IVRS, IWRS or other such system that you have. Um, so those are just some tips. So those are the two documents I always recommend collecting. Um, it'll, it'll just help you when you write your report um, and it'll also help you save a little bit of time on site because you can do a more detailed uh, dive into the delegation log and into the IP accountability log while you're at home and, and not necessarily on site. So those are uh, my suggestions. The other thing that I'll cover just because of its importance is SAEs. If you're dealing with an SAE, make sure, uh, I would take the time, double check it, make sure you know when it occurred, what was the nature of the SAE? Did the site notify the sponsor within 24 hours of awareness? So you need to figure out when was the site aware? When did they report it to the sponsor? If it's something that's reportable to the um, IRB, um, make sure it was reported. Uh, and you really want to spend time, especially on phase one oncology trials, because um, what I've found having monitored phase one oncology trials is on occasion, sites will miss SAEs. And for a phase one trial, especially, this is a huge issue because it could have been a dose limiting toxicity and maybe a cohort would need to be expanded or they shouldn't have escalated to the next dose based on uh, this dose limiting toxicity, but it wasn't reported. So you wanna spend a lot of time if you're looking at things like serious adverse events. Another thing you wanna spend a lot of time is scan data or rhesus if you're uh, doing oncology. Uh, if you're not familiar with rhesus, rhesus is basically how uh, tumors are measured, tumor response is measured. So you'd know 
if uh, there was a partial response, stable disease, progressive disease, um, a complete response. So spend some time for rhesus do you have to go into the scans crops reference the measurements that they have on the scans with what will often be a rhesus worksheet that the site has and then make sure that the uh thing that the site is claiming is actually accurate for example if you have a 50 percent decrease in tumor and the site has listed this as stable disease it should probably meet the criteria for partial response uh, when you're writing queries and this is in general uh, make sure they're not specifically instructing the site to do something. Your queries always want to tell the site per EMR node dated blah, 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 or per document in source, uh, this is what you're seeing. However, the site should update EDC or update source as appropriate. Um, you don't want to tell the site your worksheet is wrong, please update the worksheet. Like you should never be leading the site to do anything. The site should be clarifying what's correct. Um, that, could be a whole separate video on how to write effective queries, but um, I'm not going to go that into that. I'm not going to go into that here, rather. Um, so, I think those were uh, tips. So, the uh, way that I get to writing reports uh, well is taking detailed notes during my visit. So then, after the visit, what do I uh, do? Um, one of the last tips I have for during the visit is to start your report. And when I say this, I just mean if you have a CTMS system that has a item that says start report, click on it. I like to put in the attendees. Um, I don't usually try to spend any time uh, writing the actual report while on site. Like I said, site time is kind of precious, so you want to limit how much report writing you're doing. But if you uh, want, you can put in the attendees, and oftentimes you can also close out action items as they're resolved. So those are just a couple of things. So now we've gotten to post site. So I like to take my time, write the report based on my notes that were based on the annotations. So I have clear notes that get me through each uh, point in the annotations, quickly uh, jot those down. I like to do a relatively fastish first draft, but then I proofread and proofread again, um, which I find a lot of CRAs don't do. They, they're just so happy to get to the end of the report and they just hit submit and then they get back 50 comments because they didn't proofread their work. You don't want spelling mistakes, you don't want grammar mistakes, and you want your reports to go in as quickly as possible. So I have that 72 hour rule that I try to follow. I like to have my my first draft in within 72 hours of a visit. Obviously, uh, I did mention I have two from this past week and one from the week before that, so I've kind of violated my own rule. Um, but as much as possible, 72 hours, I think that's a good amount of time. Um, and I also try not to schedule too many back-to-back -back visits. I, I, I try to give myself a down time in between visits so I at least have a day to write the report. So those are my tips for effective report writing. This really all comes down to effective prep, effective notes, and then not making any spelling grammar errors and turning in your reports in a timely manner. All right, I hope that was helpful. I think of your uh, new CRA and just getting started. Um, this video uh, should be a good overview for you. If you've been writing reports for decades, um, you probably know all of this. So uh, if you made it this far, uh, either way, thank you for watching. Um, I do uh, really appreciate the support. Just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already, take your time to smash that like button and to subscribe to my channel. All right, until uh, next time, thank you for watching. And as always, if there's anything you'd like me to cover, please list it down in the comments.